Hello folks, and today I'm here to talk to you about quite a serious topic, one which I think affects an awful lot of us, unfortunately, in the enthusiast scene. And that, my friends, is GPU sag. Now, we've all seen it when you have a GPU that's maybe the size of your arm and it's stuck inside a case and it's only held up by a paltry PCIe bracket on the back. It forms like a skateboard ramp. Sometimes you think, oh, I could easily go down that and achieve some fantastic slope figures. It's not good enough and I think we all deserve a bit better. Well, thankfully, we also live in the modern world and we have the ability to solve this ourselves. So, what have I been doing? Well, I've been putting my 3D printers to good use and making a bunch of GPU support brackets that you can try at home. And also, I would encourage you to try making your own designs as well because there's so many different things you can do. So obviously I got this one back in the summer and uh, it's been absolutely fantastic. I've used it to make the Wilson PC, loads of brackets in like the Bloodlines builds as well as the um, Aorus other detailing and things. And it's been absolutely vital to my workflow. So recently I thought, well, let's also dip my toes into resin printing. So I got one of these, which is an Elegoo Mars. So this is a budget resin printer that uses the MLSA process. So it has like a screen on the inside, basically from a mobile phone and that masks off UV LEDs to be able to cure resin in a vat. Now, the advantage of this one is that it allows you to have incredibly high print resolution, something which you can't possibly hope to achieve with an extrusion printer like one of these um, i3s from Prusa. But it does come at the cost of having to use more expensive resin and also going to the fact that you've got a very small print bed. But if you have one of each, actually it allows you to do an awful lot of things. And the best bit is these are incredibly cheap. This was, I think, £229 on Amazon um, Prime and everything. And the resin itself is about £30 a kilo if you get the Anycubic stuff. And so that's what I've been using. And it is absolutely fantastic. The resolution is beyond insane. And I'll be able to show you exactly what I'm talking about in a mo. But for now, we need to focus on GPU sag because it is a bit of an issue. And there are lots of different ways to solve it. So first way, of course, being bit tech, we've got ourselves a one, two, three block. So typically, now whilst this card doesn't have a lot of sag because it's actually very lightweight, we're just going to imagine we've got some very big one and it's sagging. Maybe you've got like a, a GPU water block on there that weighs almost a kilo and it's really hanging down on the card. You can always just plonk something, you know, the everyday item underneath and it will hold it rather nicely. Alternatively, one of the other classics is to use some fishing line from the top. Uh, and also there are stock brackets that you can buy from various shops that do the job as well. But it's a lot more fun to make your own. So let's have a look at a few different designs that I've come up with. Now, all these are going to be available for download on the GrabCAD link in the description as well. If you want to go take a look yourselves, you can also use them maybe for measurements just to give things a go yourself and work something out that maybe is a bit unique. So design number one, we're starting with something very simple, which is one of these. So you may recognize this as being sort of quite the classic design used in an awful lot of um, laser cut and CNC machined brackets. And you can do this very easily on a printer such as the Prusa A3. So I've basically printed this off at uh, 0.2 millimeter layer height. I've used PTG to give it a little bit more temperature resistance than PLA, so it shouldn't quite warp as much. Obviously, you still don't want it to get it really hot, but uh, it should have more than enough strength and be fine for this purpose. Basically, what it does is it fits underneath the card here in the PCIe brackets and just gives it a bit more strength. And of course, being 3D printed, you can adjust the shape, you can change the look of it. So I've gone with this sort of structural triangular brace look because uh, I think it fits quite nicely with the Be Quiet build because we've got all the triangles in there. And it printed in about two hours or so. Uh, so I've used 30% infill and I've used a rectilinear shape and used the transparent PTG. I find that works really quite nicely. Um, gyroids fine as well, but I think rectilinear seems to work really nicely for the clear filaments. It gives it a cleaner look on the inside. Uh, of course, you can use lots of different colors and different shapes, shades, all sorts of things like that. So that's one of the really cool things about these. And it fits just perfectly into the bed shape, just like that. Really nice and simple, very approachable if you're sort of new to 3D printing and CAD as well. It's basically just a 2D design. There's not a huge amount that you need to take into account. So when you download the file, you'll see it's very, very simple. But I think we can do something a little bit more interesting. And that's where these come in. So 
it's all well and good having something basic like this which can slide up and down a little bit, maybe four or five millimeters. But what if you want that just extra bit of adjustability and the ability to move it from maybe one rig to another or just keep with a very simple design that you know is going to work in lots of different situations? Well, I've got these two which are fully adjustable and that's because they have 3D printed screw threads. Now unfortunately these ones are actually too big to use in this particular rig because they were designed with another one in mind and the PCI slot on this motherboard is one lower because it uses the top one for the um, M2s and smaller PCI devices. So I can't actually demonstrate how these work in this particular rig. But basically I've used an M25 thread on the inside of these parts and I've printed it off on the Prusa. Again it's really fast. These print off in about uh, three, four hours or so and it's amazing with the resolution that you can get on a printer like this. It's basically a flat M25 thread. We've got a threaded side on the uh, got a female side, we've got a male side, and they just thread in. This one's exactly the same, but it only goes to a shorter distance, so this one can only adjust by up to 15 millimeters. Very, very simple design, and it's really, really effective. And of course, you can make this fancy as you want. So you could either maybe use a different material, you could have the screw threads on this and have um, a different part on like a padding on the top. Maybe you could add some metal around the outside, you can spray paint them, do designs, you can do whatever you want with these. And it's really, really easy. And because they're basically just round cylinders, uh, they actually print incredibly successfully. And I was incredibly impressed by how the threads came out basically correct the first time. There was no pro post-processing needed at all on these. It just took a little bit of effort just to screw it in the first time, just because at the top they're a little bit maybe rough on the edges of the print. But once you've done that, you can maybe even rough it up with a little sandpaper just to make that bit faster. Once it's done, they just work flawlessly and there's very little play. In fact, some of the real screws that I've got have a bit more play than this. So this is really quite impressive. And because we're not constantly using this back and forth and all that, it shouldn't be a problem. You shouldn't have any issues with it wearing out and as long as you just are sensible with it, I think. But that's using the basic sort of FDM printers. Of course, there's loads of other designs as well. I've had uh, another one which I was hoping maybe to try and get done in time, but the bearings didn't arrive, uh, which is like a linear piston and that has like a smooth one. So if I can get that one done in time, I'll put the model up for download. If not, then maybe save it for a future piece that we can maybe feature on in the channel. But there is, of course, a different technology that I've got here as well. So these are for the FDM printer, but what about using the MLSA one? So there is something to be said about being a discerning individual and one who will take no compromises at all. But of course, for the ultimate uncompromising connoisseur, there is but one suitable option. Picture this. Your GPU is so heavy, there is no way it can be supported by your PCI bracket. Simple PLA creations and PTG is not enough. We have to do better. Well, there is no better than the mythical Titan Atlas himself supporting your graphics card. So what makes Atlas particularly interesting for me is that I did this using a completely different method to any of the printing that I've done before. So I've used previously, before I got my own printers, SLS and sort of other industrial systems, but I've never done stereolithography, and of course I've never done home stereolithography, or in this case, MLSA printing. And it was really quite an interesting experience because it's actually incredibly simple. Um, and not only is it very simple, but it's, it's just fantastic in the detail that it can produce. These were largely limited uh, rather than by the printer, but actually by the quality of the model. Now, I was quite lucky that I managed to find a fantastic uh, sculpture of Atlas holding up a pillar top. Um, I'm going to link that one in the description below. Uh, it's a paid model and it was, I think in my opinion, 100% worth it because it was a really high quality sort of 960,000 polygon Z brush sculpt. And it really shows in the smaller detail areas, sort of like the head, how you can see the ears, the inner ear. Uh, I was amazed by how the beard has the full curls. You can just get all the resolution of that. Um, even the eyebrows actually on the smaller model, because the larger one is a poly reduced one because I had to edit it to be able to change the shape a little bit. Um, but even in that one, you can still see the sort of like the, the sculpted eyebrows on the figurehead and it's absolutely astounding. And it's amazing to me that, to think that you can get that sort of detailed print of such an affordable machine nowadays. Um, I mean, this is about a third of the cost of one of my Prusas, and it's just astounding. So I was really interested in seeing what I can maybe use this for in the future. I'd love to maybe do the um, uh, printed cable cones that I use quite a lot, 
Uh, I could do these in much higher detail, use a sort of a tighter pattern as well, uh, and do different kind of shapes with them that aren't either feasible to be done with an extrusion printer and definitely not feasible to do on the CNC machine. Now, one of the other things, of course, you've got lots of different resins, uh, but generally the way it works, you use a 405 nanometer UV curing resin. Uh, I've got white in here at the moment, so that's what I printed these in. So it's just a, a standard white. Uh, it's a little bit brittle, but uh, that's like the basic resins. You do get some which are more durable, others which, spe which uh, specialize in high definition prints, for instance. A lot of the gray ones are like that if you want to get a really good finish that you can uh, you know, easily just work with straight away. And basically you have one of these, you give it a good alcohol wash straight afterwards to remove any of the resin, uh, and then you have to UV cure it. So Form Labs is uh, one of the big boy areas in the sort of uh, enthusiast printing scene for SLA printers, but their printers are still very expensive for the regular enthusiasts. They're really designed at maybe home businesses and sort of prototyping reasons where you're not going to be able to, uh, well, you're going to be able to make money off the printer itself directly. Maybe you're selling figures or you're doing uh, mold work, um, rapid prototyping of small items, that sort of thing. Uh, these ones are more kind of geared towards home use and also for doing things like printing figures for maybe tabletop gaming, that sort of realm. Because if you look at the detail on these, you could very easily use them for tabletop gaming, no problem. Whilst they don't quite stand up to the detail of like a full on Warhammer resin kit, um, in terms of comparing to the plastic models they produce, I think it, they compare very favorably. And of course, you can get all the different resins on Amazon as well, and you can even make your own UV curing stations. So I'm hoping to do that in a future video where I make a proper one. For the time being though, I've got this nice jank set up using one of these. So this is a uh, 72 watt UV curing for um, nails. So if you're going to be doing uh, yeah, have a nice manicure, use one of those to, for your gel coats. And basically it just shines a bunch of UV light uh, out and I've got a little turntable. So what I do here is I place the model on the turntable and then I just prop that up next to it and I put a box around it just to make sure it's all safe because obviously you don't want to be looking at any UV light and I make sure I'm not in the room as well because uh, it can do nasty stuff to your eyes UV so you've got to be careful with that and then I just set the timer to go for this only goes for one minute at a time um, you just need to go for maybe five six minutes and you're generally your print is going to be fully cured and this is such a really simple solution this is what 20 pounds this was another like 15 20 pounds on Amazon so for that basically tiny outlay you've got a fully functioning UV curing station. And then of course, if you want to do a proper DIY solution, you can always buy some separate lights, maybe UV cathodes or like higher power consumption LEDs, and just make your own one using you know, standard materials like some mirror plates or some aluminium, something like that, just to get the UV bouncing around inside and not going all over the room. So I'm really looking forward to using this technology in some of the future builds, not least for doing sort of the cable comb work that I mentioned earlier, um, but it could be really good for doing aesthetic details. So obviously I've done a number of game themed mods in the past, so being able to print out small details from those I think would be absolutely fantastic, especially with the resolution that I can get on here. And if I just make sure that the models are very high polygon and smooth, the anti-aliasing will get rid of any of the jagged lines that the screens themselves can produce, and I think it should be really exciting to see where that can go. The other thing that's really handy about the resin prints is that it's much easier to do the post-processing afterwards. So the problem with FDM is that because it comes out um, sort of ridged, you've got to be careful about how you sand it down. You can go all the way through into the infill by accident sometimes. Um, and generally you need to use layers of filler, sand it down, more filler, then you've got to prime it, check it, and then do it all over again until you get to a smooth point, like we did on the 3D print for this particular mod. But with the resin prints, you tend to be printing solid pieces, or if you are hollowing it out, uh, you can decide the exact wall thickness and it's a bit easier to judge. So I just went at the top of the pillars using some 320 grit just to flatten it out a little bit because some of the supports on the, the bigger one uh, failed, I noticed, at the start of the print and so the top is a little bit warped. Now luckily it actually kind of fits the theme in this case but if I were to do it again I think I'd just change my model slightly so I can account for that in the next print. 
So as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be putting all these models up for download on GrabCAD, bar this one over here, which I can't for licensing reasons. But I can put the bigger edited one up because it is a royalty-free license. So as long as I've edited the file, it's not exactly the same as the original, you're free to download it. And this one has been changed quite a bit from this one. So that one will be available as well. So for the support required for this particular mod, it's 80 millimeters. Yours might be smaller, bigger. You'll be able to scale that in CAD very easily. And especially in the uh, slicer softwares, that's why I found it's much easier. So this printer uses Chi2 box. I can just set 80 millimeters print height and it does it all automatically. So you don't need to worry about trying to do it in Fusion, which is actually quite difficult because for some reason, they don't have a scale feature to a particular function. So you have to scale it to a scale factor rather than a set numerical value, which does, of course, make things really difficult. Thankfully, you can do it in the slicing software, though, as I mentioned, so that's the way I would do it. But I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys all come up with. Make sure you link your projects either over on our Discord uh, or in the comments, because I think it could be really inter interesting seeing what different designs are possible. Now, if 3D printing and modding is your thing, you're in the right place. So make sure if you haven't already subscribed to the channel because we're gonna have plenty of more interesting content like this and also full builds, reviews, modding content, all sorts of stuff coming up in the future and you wouldn't wanna miss any of it. Of course, as I mentioned, we're on Discord as well. You can also find us over on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and builds.gg. I'll catch you next time, folks.